Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to David Williams Ice Monster, chapters 21 and 22. So, if you remember, we had been um, talking about other books that we like to read. One that I really enjoyed was David Williams' The Midnight Gang. Now, in this book, you get to see about these kids that are in a hospital and what they do to help each other feel better. Now, think about things that you can do that make people feel better as well. This is the book for you. If you like to make people feel better about themselves and about their situations, check out The Midnight Gang at our library. All right, and with that, let's get started with chapters 21 and 22. Chapter 21. A thousand silk handkerchiefs. In his chief, uh, excuse me, in his secret laboratory, the professor expounded his madcap plan. We need to make a giant hot air balloon from silk handkerchiefs and fly it high over the museum into the lightning storm. Elsie, you will need to steal the silk handkerchiefs. Have you ever stolen anything before? Well, once or twice, lied the girl. How many do you need? Mmm, no more than a thousand. A thousand? Give or take. Where am I going to get a thousand silk handkerchiefs from? A thousand well-to-do ladies and gentlemen, of course. Now, we will also need a round piece of metal, continued the professor, like a soldier's tin helmet. <clears throat> Suddenly, Dottie jumped up and down, looking as if she desperately needed to wee. But in actual fact, she was just overexcited. Oh! oh waving her hand in the air. Yes, asked the professor. I know where to get a tin helmet. Me boyfriend, Titch. We'll have one of from his war days. Perfect. We will need to attach it to the top of the balloon. Let me show you. The professor reached into his pocket of his dirty laboratory coat. Now, where on earth is my chalk? Elsie looked at the little, a little sheepish. Oh, it must have slipped out of your pocket and into my hand, she lied. Very good, child. Very good. The professor was mightily impressed. Those fingers will come in handy when you're stealing the handkerchiefs. The old man held out his hand, and she placed the stolen chalk into it. Then he began drawing his invention on the wall of the laboratory, giving a commentary as he sketched. So here is the balloon with the tin helmet at the very top. The balloon will have a wicker basket attached by ropes at the bottom here. In the middle of the basket, we will place a metal drum. Inside that drum, wood will be burned. The hot air will cause the balloon to inflate and take to the skies. Oh, this is all getting very involved, muttered Dottie. Silence, while the great professor speaks, he snapped. Then the pilot of the balloon will fly up into the heart of the storm when lightning strikes here. He bashed his chalk against his drawing of the metal helmet. The lightning bolt will travel along this length of copper wire all the way down through the museum itself. The end of the wire we will have embolded, embedded right into. But before he could finish his sentence, Elsie did it for him. The mammoth's heart. Exactly, exclaimed the professor. You're a fast learner, young lady. Dottie put her hand in the air. Yes, he asked grandly. Can I say something? No, he snapped. The lady crossed her arms in a sulk. So you, Elsie, will steal the thousand silk handkerchiefs. Then you, Dottie, will sew them together to make a balloon. The tin helmet this Titch character will provide, the basket, metal drum, and firewood. Elsie can scavenge the streets. Copper wire I have here in my ex last experiment. It, could be sim it couldn't be simpler. Dottie and Elsie stood there open-mouthed in shock. Simple was not the word that sprang to mind. So who will be going up in the balloon, asked Elsie. The professor grinned a wicked grin. Not you, child. No? No. I need a little person to squeeze through all the nooks and crannies of the museum and thread that copper wire all the way down from the roof to the main hall. Are you going up in the balloon then, professor? Asked the girl. <laughs> no, child. My infirmity would prevent me from undertaking such deadly mission. So who is? The professor's dark eyes fixed on Dottie. Elsie followed his gaze. Why is everyone looking at me? Dottie asked. Because you, cleaning woman, 
will have the honor of taking on the most dangerous, perhaps deadly, part of the mission. Flying the hot air balloon straight into a lightning storm. Chapter 22, The Beauty of the Scheme. Me? Yes, you, replied the professor. But I'm scared of heights. I even feel wobbly standing on a chair to dust the ceiling. Listen to me, woman, commanded the professor. What better honor could there be in life than to die in the name of science? Die? That is the worst case scenario. I'm too young to die. The professor peered over his half-moon spectacles to examine the lady. I beg to differ. How dare you? I will go up in the I will go up in the balloon, offered Elsie. No, 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 began the man. How on earth would we get this great fat lump down the chimney? Charming. Charming, exclaimed Dottie. No, I'm old and fat. Don't fret, woman. There's a little chance of you falling out and plunging to your death, as I can strap you to the basket. That's reassuring, replied the lady. Obviously, the real danger is being hit by lightning. What? Don't worry. It's a very quick and painless death. You will be incinerated in a millisecond. You c would barely know what hit you. That's the beauty of the scheme. You're nuts! Thank you, replied the professor. What about clout? asked Elsie. Yes, mused the man. The security guard can be very troublesome. We need to somehow make sure he's otherwise engaged. I don't think he's engaged or married, said Dottie. It's a figure of speech, exclaimed the professor. Perhaps we could lock him in the cleaning cupboard, suggested the girl. That would be perfect, he replied. How are we going to get out of here without being seen, asked Elsie. The whole museum is swarming with police and guards right now. You can climb out of the cold chute just here. The man wheeled himself over to the wall and revealed a small opening, opening hidden by a box. Dottie examined the hole. What about me? she asked. Well, you can try and squeeze yourself up the chute and then you can poke you through the prodding your ample bottom with this broomstick. <laughs> That's very kind of you, replied Dottie sarcastically. But that ain't look looking for me. Just the girl. I think I'll wait a while and then I can coast as clear. Go out the door and up the stairs. Yes, but don't wait too long, please replied the professor. I don't want you chuttering up the place. Well, excuse me. Elsie. Yes, professor. I want you back here at the say this time tomorrow night with 1,000 silk handkerchiefs. Tomorrow night? Yes, child. No later than nine o'clock tomorrow night. And look here. The air pressure is getting lower. The man pointed to the barometer on the wall. We need to be ready for a lightning storm by the end of the week. I'll do my best, Professor, said the girl as she shimmied up the chute. The professor stared at Dottie for a while. Are you still here? he asked. Meanwhile, Elsie ran away from the museum as fast as she could. Her mind raced along with her legs. How on earth was she going to steal 1,000 handkerchiefs in just 24 hours? Wow. All right, that does it for chapters 21 and 22. Remember, all right. Let's do this right. You. We're going to show it one time. Ready? So be ready to shout out the answer. Are you ready to shout it out? Okay. You will be answering each and every single question with complete sentences. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your day. And remember, if you like to help people, check out this other book from the library called The Midnight Gang. We'll see you next time.